kids will be making Easter candy. So uh, see Cheryl if you want to perform. What kind of you want? That we would appreciate that. Make sure you check your bulletin for any other announcements. I guess it's going to be a Tim's Tuesday now instead of a Wine and Wednesday. Check your bulletin for that. And um, any other uh, announcements that you might have? Me and Beth. Well, that's her you um, don't know for sure what day. Yeah. Yeah. In addition to Easter candy forms, okay. there's a sign-up sheet on the Welcome Center. If you want to donate supplies that we need, please write your name and then next to it the number of whatever you're bringing. Okay. And the ladies or men can come and help on Friday, March 31st. We'll be making the peanut, peanut butter eggs on Friday, March 31st. And then the kids have to be here on Saturday, April 1st. Not a joke. You need to be here if you want to go to Summit. Be here April 1st. Okay. And uh, adults can help on the date or on Friday. Yeah, adults can help on that day too, but we need your kids all here on Saturday. On Saturday. On Friday is when the adults all make the peanut butter eggs. We always look forward to those. Okay, somebody else has an announcement. Joan. Yes, yeah, so March 12th, we're having a luncheon after church to kick off a, a pantry drive. So um, there's information in your bulletin, but um, a tip and sandwich. So everyone's welcome to stay. Okay, that's on the March 12th. Uh, kick off for the pantry. Maybe bring some supplies. There will be more announcements about that. Okay. People are keeping that uh, pointing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dale Brewer died uh, yesterday morning, and uh, there'll be a dinner here. Well, the funeral will probably be finished, but we don't know for sure. Dale Brewer died yesterday. Yesterday morning. Yeah. So, uh, there'll be a dinner here at. Will you know the arrangements yet? No. We'll give you the details when we have them. Okay. We'll give details then, but we will need volunteers to bring food for that whenever it is. Okay. And Ken. Uh, I went and visited Diana Bayshore yesterday. She's on her third day of chemo today. It'll be a fourth day. Um, she's a little wore out. But she really wanted to state the fact that she appreciated all the prayers, thoughts, and she wished she could be here. So. Oh, sure. We wish she could, too. Is she in the hospital? Right yes, now? doing She's her chemo. The for, she, she'll probably be there till Tuesday, probably. She has to go in for the chemo. We're happy the world travelers are back. I guess maybe they were here last week. I don't know. I'll listen. Okay. All right. Um, any other announcements? Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Our Father in heaven, we just thank you and praise you that we live in a country where we can come and worship you freely. We thank you for, especially for Jesus who died for us to give us the hope of eternal life and a more and a, and a perfect eternal life. And uh, we just pray that you will be with our service today, that it will bring glory and honor to you. We have passed raised that he brings your words to us. Forgive us, Lord, when we have failed you, when we have done things our way instead of your way. And just go with us this week as we carry your word to others. These things we pray, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Good morning. That's pretty good. I won't make you do it again. You stay with us. We're going to start off by singing Glorious Day. Wake you up, get you moving. What's your doing?
tries to grab Many trials to see the never end His word declares the truth We will enter in his rest With wonders new But I hold on to this hope And the promise that he brings That there will be a place with no more suffering going to uh, pass out the plates while they're passing out the plates for if you'd like to worship in, uh, by giving of your tithes and offerings. I'll share a little devotion. This uh, month's verse is 1 Corinthians 16. You can go ahead and start. Oh, you know what? Maybe we'll pray. Should we pray? Should we pray? Should I ask that question? All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for how much you love us, that you gave us your one and only Son, to save us from our sins, you are a giving God. Help us to also give to those in need and uh, to your ministry and give of ourselves in every way uh, to be follow your example because we're made in your image. And we thank you, God, most of all for who? Jesus. Amen. So uh, this month, we do pass the plates about once a month. Some people requested that because they forget. So we do have the boxes in the back and you can give online. But... I just want to read to you 1 Corinthians 16. Paul writes, Now regarding your questions about money being collected for God's people in Jerusalem, you should follow the same procedure I gave to the church in Galatia. He says, On the first day of each week, Paul says, On the first day of each week, 
You should put aside a portion of your money that you have earned. Don't wait until I get there and then try to collect it all at once. Because maybe if you wait, your money kind of goes away. Anybody ever have that happen? So Paul was encouraging them to do what we're still called to do today. Give to Jesus' mission, his work in this world. And notice what Paul didn't say. Paul didn't say, spend whatever you make on whatever you want. And then if you can find any coins left in your couches or maybe in the cup holder on your camel, right? <laughs> then you can uh, just give the leftovers and the scraps to God, whatever you guys can come up with after you've already spent most of your money on cable and pizza and DoorDash and cell phones and whatever. Extras, we buy motorcycles and boats and iPads and basketball. I don't know what you guys are into. TikTok, or, we won't. Anyway, he didn't say that. But unfortunately, that's kind of what a lot of Christians end up doing today is uh, people. There's, I just heard a statistic that like 64% of people in America are now living paycheck to paycheck. And it's hard. The money's hard out there. But we're called to be different, aren't we? We're called to be weird in a God sort of way. Uh, different than the world by focusing everything that we are on Jesus' mission, including our wallets. All that we are belongs to Jesus, including our finances. And we want to give back to him uh, like Paul was encouraging them to do, like a lot of the Old Testament encouraged people do, to give our first and best. We're not going to cut a lamb's throat or anything. We don't do that here. Not anymore. I mean, not for thousands of years. But, yeah, please. Uh, no blood. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't be a priest back then. That would be, I'm a city boy. I don't like butchering, you know, what do they call them? Cleaning animals or something. Dressing. dressing, thank you. Well, it's really undressing, but anyway, <laughs> dressing animals. But they encouraged us, Paul encouraged us to give our first and best. And Dave Ramsey would say, how do we do that? By making uh, our tithes and offerings a priority, by putting it at the top of our budget sheet instead of at the very end, give whatever we have left we can find in our couches, uh, on paper, on purpose, before the month begins, and then... We have made that a priority. Planning to spend the rest, 90% or, or less, on everything else. Bills and so forth. I know if you're used to that, if you had that growing up like I did, and that was just part of, you know, I earned $20 mowing a yard. My dad said, okay, now you give this much back to the church. $2, right? That's, he, they instilled in me. In that. And if you're not used to tithing or giving offerings, that can be harder to get used to. But start somewhere. Start planning for it. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who gives back, who gives uh, to Troy View Church, making uh, God's ministry here a priority in your life um, because we couldn't do what we do without you. So thank you. And there's your offering devotion. Don't, don't clap. Don't clap. Thank you. If you'll steam with us, we're going to sing one more time. Is it cut now? <laughs>
We're dismissed to Junior Church. Anything to give? Alms? Look on us. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Melanie said, Dan, are you okay? What'd you do? <laughs> and the kids are like, what happened? What happened? Now, life hurts sometimes, doesn't it? There's suffering all around us. But why? Why is there sickness and sorrow and suffering and injury? Oh. You guys are going to beat me up, aren't you? You wouldn't beat a cripple, would you? Why is there hurt and pain? And disease and death in this world. Why? Because we're sin. Okay. That's it. Have a good week, everybody. Thanks for coming this morning. Appreciate you. Well, that was quick. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't do that. Don't, don't even think about it, Joe. <laughs> You're right. You hit the hail on, nail on the head, Jim. Because of sin in this world. Y'all remember Adam and Eve from Genesis in the garden? They sinned. The world fell into a, a state of disrepair. Uh, a state that is far from God. And so now, because of their rebellion, and really we would have rebelled if they hadn't rebelled, but because of that rebellion, we live in a world today that is broken. Where there's hurt and pain and sickness and sorrow and suffering everywhere we turn. Disease and death. I don't have to tell you that. If you've lived any amount in this world, or if you've spent the past three years hearing about something, some virus, COVID-19 or whatever it's called, I haven't heard much about it. It's everywhere. Now, sometimes in life, we do have like uh, poor choices and decisions that lead to bad consequences, you reap what you sow, right? So if you're driving drunk at 100 miles an hour, you know, you're going to ask them for it. Or if we do certain things to our bodies or, or hurt other people or say things or whatever, cuss out our boss, we're going to reap some consequences that may not be the fault of sin. It may be our own fault. But the rest of the time, the world is just hurting right now. The world is broken. The world is in a state that has not yet uh, been perfected. It has been saved, but we're waiting on our Savior to return and to get rid of all the sickness and the sorrow and the pain and the hurt and the death. But He will one day. 
Right now, we're living in it, though. Everything in this world has been infected by the sin disease, you could say. Infected and affected by sin. And it hurts. Life hurts. I, I don't have to tell you that. You already know that. I don't have to uh, compel you to understand how much life hurts because you've all been living in it. You weren't born yesterday. So turn with me to Acts chapter 3. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to see today the first of 14 physical healings in the book of Acts. And what it's doing is it's giving us a peek into the kingdom of God. A peek into God's kingdom so that uh, we can see how the power, uh, the power of God's spirit, what it does in people's life. If I can get this off. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, well... Yeah, but I didn't want to have a sock out here, a stinky sock, Allie. There we go. And what we're going to see in the book of Acts chapter 3 is this man, they call him the lame man. And what he does, and what we can do too, that's what we're getting at, we're kind of like him in some ways. Uh, we're going to see that one day we can be like him too. Fully healed Fully walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God. Right? Anybody remember that kid's song? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Please clap. No, just kidding. Wasn't that Jeb Bush? Please clap. No, don't clap. Don't clap. Don't encourage me. So here we go. Acts chapter 3 verse 1. We are more like him than you may have realized. Let's check it out. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a lame man from birth, imagine that, lame from birth, was being carried, whom they delayed daily at the gate of the temple that is called the beautiful gate to ask alms of those entering the temple. He's begging for money. Verse 3. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. Please, sir, may I have some more? Right. Verse 4, And Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, Look at us! And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. Something different. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you. And this is way better. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All right. You can write this thought down. We're going to pause there right now. Write this down if you got your bulletin. We're all spiritually sick and in need of healing. Not just physical healing, but we're all spiritually sick. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're lame. <laughs> now turn to your other neighbor and say, you're really lame. All right. Here's the deal. You're all super lame. And so are you. You're lame. And so am I. We're all spiritually lame. We all have this sin sickness in our life, metaphorically, we are a lot like this man. He'd been crippled from birth, the next chapter says, for about 40 years. 40 years crippled from birth. Unable to live a normal life. He never took one step out of his mother's womb. They were probably waiting for him. When's he going to walk? When's he going to walk? And he never walked. Never went for a walk around the block. Anybody enjoy a little walk around the block? Anybody's dogs? Take him for a walk around the block. <laughs> Never on the playground, he never got to run around with his friends. He saw him climbing trees, never got to climb up a tree. And he also likely never married because he had no income up to this point. No way to provide for a family. That's really, really hard for a family to be joined to somebody who doesn't have any income, no way to buy food. And they didn't have the government assistance back then like they do today. It just wasn't very possible. So he's in a really, really difficult position. This man, this lame man, he can't take care of himself. He can't defend himself. Right? 
He has to rely on the mercy and the compassion and the love of other people, his friends, maybe his family, whoever's there to carry him around everywhere he goes. And he's living in extreme poverty, relying on the generosity of God's people, going into this temple to worship, to pray. And maybe, just maybe, these quote-unquote Christians, you know, these Jews and, and some Christians, uh, maybe because they're going into worship, maybe they're feeling a little bit on the generous side. Because we're called to be generous, like our God. So he's out there at this gate. There's something going on with your mind. Yeah, I know. Trying to get them to uh, give him money so he doesn't starve to death. Anybody like food? Anybody like to eat food? I see most of you not raising your hands. I know. Anybody not like to raise their hand? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. So he's in a dire situation, but then God's power. See, this is what it is. Here's, we're stuck. Here's the problem. But God. But God. But God enters into his life through Peter and John. God's power and God's spirit comes and heals him. And it's a literal fulfillment of Isaiah 53. Excuse me, Isaiah 35. It's about 700 years later, the prophet Isaiah writes, The lame will leap like a deer. And the mute will speak, will sing for joy. And that's what Jesus did. That's what God's power through Jesus and through the disciples did. The lame, leaping like a deer. That's a picture, isn't it? You ever see a deer leaping? Maybe right before your car hits it? It's kind of, <laughs> it happens too. By the way, oh, that reminds me. There are some deer bones up on the ditch. If anybody, kind of back, back, back towards the next driveway. If anybody wants to go check them out. We found some while we were, the homeschoolers were cleaning up. Just a big pile of deer bones and antlers. So. And there's a possum too. Anyway, go check it out if you like that kind of stuff. Some kids are adult, huh? So there's not much left of the possum. Not much left of the possum. I saw the tail and some fur. Yeah. Adults are like, oh, gross. And kids are like, oh, cool, blood, <laughs> bones, whoa. <laughs> so here's what we got to remember about this guy. We are very much like him. Sometimes... It, not just our health problems, though we have that sometimes too, but spiritually we are like him. We were all born lame, hurt, crippled since birth because of this sin disease. Uh, we were unable to walk with God because of how Adam and Eve rebelled and we had that separation from them. We weren't able to walk with God. And they passed it down to their descendants. We're also poor. This guy's poor. We're sinners. We're bankrupt without God in our life. We cannot uh, pay our way to salvation through our, our good works and deeds. We owe God everything. A tremendous debt because of His Son Jesus. What He did for us. And this guy, he was uh, outside the temple. He was outside the temple. We're outside the temple. All sinners are separated from God. Some are closer to the door than others, right? If we think about Hitler... Or Darth Vader, right? They're way far away from the door. And other people are closer. But we're all outside the door. See, the foot of the cross is even ground. We're all sinners in need of saving. And you could even say when it comes to our relationship with God, without Jesus, we don't even have a leg to stand on. Thank you, Carter. Thank you. He gets it. We don't have a leg to stand on, all right? This man was in a hopeless condition. He was helpless. He was immobilized. He was broken. And so are we. But the apostles reached out to the lame man. And with God's power in them, he gave them more than they could ever hope for or imagine. And that's what God, through Jesus, does for us too. Jesus reaches down to us. He came to us in our fallen humanity, our sin, sickness. We were... Uh, Wretched sinners, the worst of the worst, so far from him. Pitiful, poor, blind, and naked, right? Says the verse. But Jesus, out of his love for us, he reached down and he picked us up. And he healed us of our sin disease, spiritually and forever. I like uh, 
I think it's Isaiah, by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah 53. By his stripes, by his wounds we are healed. His death on the cross paid that penalty for us in our place, place, atoned for our sins. And everyone who repents of their sin, who trusts in Jesus, and trusts in his name, you'll see in that, in that passage that in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, we, we say, rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus, that doesn't mean just his name like Dan. It means his power and his authority that comes through his name, from God, through uh, who he is. And they healed him, made him whole. Not just physically, but spiritually. And I know a lot of this um, life, we deal with hurts and pains, don't we? We deal with aches and struggles and doctors and hospitals and funerals. But this life isn't all there is. And that's our hope for Jesus beyond the grave. That when Jesus reaches down to us and he pulls us up just like the lame man and he pulls us up, we are healed. When we repent and believe and come to him, we are healed spiritually forever, forgiven of all our sins. And sometimes we are healed physically in this life. I was talking with Diana at the hospital. She's getting her chemo treatment this last week. And she said, I was reading this article about how the miracles were only for that time, the early church. They're not for today. They've ceased for today. They're all done. They're all gone. And she said, I don't believe that, Dan. I can't believe that. I'm not going to believe that. And I don't believe that either. I believe that to kick off the church, God did pour out His Spirit, fill these apostles' disciples with His power to do these miracles in His name in a great movement of a way to really kick off this thing, this church. To really show people who Jesus was to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. But I believe and I trust that He still does that today. That He still heals. That He still performs miracles. Do you believe that He still performs miracles? He's the great physician. Your doctor might be great. You might be mad at him for some things. Not all doctors are perfect, but your doctor pales in comparison to the eternal doctor who can heal all wounds and all diseases forever. And while we might not see that healing in this lifetime, we might, but we might not because one out of one people die and eventually we're not going to be healed at whatever Louise Lapp was, 104, right? Eventually a time comes for all of us. But that's not the end of the story. That's not the end of the truth that Jesus has resurrection power and will bring us forth from our graves. Arise, good and faithful servants, to enter into my kingdom and rest and peace. And he has spiritual, physical healing power over the grave. And so one day we will have, you can read it in your notes, 1 Corinthians, go read that this week, transformed bodies like Jesus. Jesus died rose, and when he was raised from the dead, he didn't just have uh, a normal body. He was kind of passing through walls and stuff, and you're like, whoa, where'd Jesus come from? <laughs> Boom, there he is. Uh, he was doing some miraculous stuff, but he had this body that no, was uh, no longer susceptible to the sin disease. No longer could he have gotten hit by a camel out in the street, right, <laughs> and have been hurt. And that's the same for us too. When we raise from the dead, resurrected, transformed bodies, the sin disease won't affect us anymore. There will be no more death. There will be no more suffering. There will be no more hospitals or need for doctors. Because a great physician will heal our bodies to the point where we have immortal bodies. Aren't you so grateful for that? That the great physician has given us a leg up Nobody? Okay. And that without him, we would just be stuck in our sin disease forever, only having hope in this life, which honestly doesn't have a lot of hope. This, this world is so full of depressing things and evil 
If you turn on the news, don't turn on the news, but if you turn it on, you're just like again and again and again with this stuff. War and famine and evil and uh, atrocities being done to other people. There will be a day when that will be no more. And that's why we need him, to give us that leg up. This man, this lame man, he was so grateful and so thankful. He didn't just say, thanks Jesus, see you later. What did he do? He got to walk into the temple and worship and praise God for the first time in his life. They had some laws there against uh, physical disabilities. You couldn't enter if you were unclean or this kind of thing. So for the first time in his life, he got to enter into the temple. And you saw him at the end. Worship. He's just like, I get to be here now. I'm invited in. And God invites us in too. Yeah, Nancy. So one assumes he would go in and be proclaiming Jesus because that's who healed him. Sure. So the people in the temple, mm -hmm. you know, the hierarchy, what would have been their reaction? You know, because... Yeah. Cause he well, this is... We're going to be coming to this in the next couple of weeks because they healed him and then the, the religious leaders are like, whoa, 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 who healed you? All right, you guys got to stop preaching about this Jesus. And they were, some were not excited about it. Others, they were Christians. Got, you know, I mean, thousands were, were con, uh, saved at Pentecost. And so there's more and more. They're increasing. But still, there's these Jewish religious leaders. And uh, there's going to be some pushback. So you have to come back next week for the next episode, Nancy, to see what happens and uh, it, it, there is a, quite a bit of conflict in the book of Acts between the religious leaders and these people proclaiming Jesus exactly right but this man was grateful are you grateful I mean are you really grateful it's easy to say thank you Jesus for saving me but do you live your life with an attitude of gratitude that Jesus has saved us from so much you got to know what he saved us from to fully appreciate uh, where you're at. It's like if you have cancer. But if you don't know you have cancer and somebody says you're healed, you're like, okay, I, I guess I was sick. I didn't know. But if you, if you have uh, a death, what do they call that? If you're destined to die because of an illness and somebody says, you have this illness, but I have the cure. Here it is. You're like, whoa, I was going to die, but now I live. We have to know the sickness first. We have to know that we have this sin disease in order to come to Jesus and find the cure. And out of that, we're so grateful for what he saved us from. Death uh, in the lake of fire to come, the, the second judgment, and he saved us into his kingdom. Are you grateful and thankful? Are you worshiping and praising him for what you've been healed from? And then Joe said, I have 15 minutes, right? 11, 15, he's got to go. All right. 14, 14 minutes now. They're going to the Jesus Revolution movie. All right. Take your time. Oh, Jen says take my time. Okay. So, Jen, here it is. This is for you. No. Let's finish this little section. Uh, Acts chapter 3. And look at right after this, uh, verse 9. Why? Let's see. Why did God heal this lame man? He, that's what he did. Why did he do it? Verse 9. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple. Asking for alms. Hey, it's that guy. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people utterly astounded. Hear these words? Wonder, amazement, astounded. Ran together to them in the portico, the porch called Solomon's. All right. Last thought. Why did God heal them? Because a glimpse of God's glory is the great goal. Say that ten times fast. Yeah. Rachel's like, that's good alliteration, Dan. Nice work. A glimpse of God's glory is the great goal. A glimpse of God's glory is the great goal. That's why he healed him. As a result of this healing, not only did the formerly lame man, uh, not only did he personally know God's love and mercy and compassion through this healing, but he also motivated the people around him to worship and praise God like, Hey, that's the, the cripple guy. And now he's leaping like a deer. And he's praising God. There's what happened. There's something that happened. Something amazing. I got to figure it out. 
Who healed him? How did he heal him? Worship, amazement, awe, wonder. And then he got to go in the temple for the first time, worshiping and leaping and praising God. This uh, man also being healed is an evangelistic opportunity from all these people. Because of what I just said. Who, who healed you? How did you get healed? What happened? And you can say, that's an opportunity. Hey, there's this guy. His name's Jesus. He's the Son of God. Savior, Messiah. You've got to get to know him. Even the religious leaders. They were preaching to them even though they didn't want to hear. But it's an evangelism opportunity. Showing, like validating, these are my people, God says. These are the disciples, they, uh, the apostles. I am empowering them in a special way to show people who I am. Hallie is texting me questions. You can text in your questions. She says, do you think you can make the lines on the bulletin insert a little bigger? <laughs> Which lines? The Six. I had a hard time oh, sick on that line. Did you? On the first line, yeah. I know. People write a little bigger than the font size. I'll see what I can do for you, Hallie, this week. <laughs> Who's the lame one now, huh? This guy who can't even make a line for people to fit. I know. Some people write bigger. So, there are lots of reasons why this lame man was healed. But the greatest reason is so God gets the glory. And so people see and worship the great God of the universe. Understanding His power and who He is. And, and revealing what the kingdom of God will be like. See, that's what Jesus did. He, he preached the kingdom of God, but He didn't just say, hey, the kingdom of God is coming. He said, hey guys, 5,000 people, 10,000, here's some food. Hey, here's a, you're leprous, you're, you've got this disease, here's healing. You've been bleeding for 12 years, here's healing. You're crippled, here's healing, right? And so he's showing people, anybody ever see like a, a teaser trailer for a movie or a sneak preview, they call it? It's just, just like a little glimpse into uh, what's to come. The glory that is coming in God's kingdom will be unlike anything we've ever experienced in this lifetime. I know sometimes you've had nice parties or events or good food or good friendship or maybe you've healed from a wound miraculously or uh, naturally. Pales in comparison for what's to come. Beyond anything we can even think or imagine is what God's kingdom will be like. Quick glimpse. I want to give us, before we close, Joe's got me, he's like, okay, Dan, Dan, here we go, all right. He's going like this. No, that's what Bill used to do. No, uh, just teasing you, Joe. <laughs> Joe's like, I got to quit coming. Dan singles me out. All right. I, Revelation 21, you can read with me if you want or just listen. This is in your notes. Revelation 21. Before we close, I want to read this to you, another glimpse of the glory that is to come. And this is what uh, Peter and, and John were, in a way, God is revealing through them and through this lame man's healing a glimpse of the kingdom of God to come. This is what it will be like. Your life has changed, but your eternity is also changed. Your healing in this lifetime is so important to you, especially a guy who hasn't walked for 40 years. But it's nothing compared to healing fully in eternity. This is what Revelation 21 says. John writes these words. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more, and I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adored for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. And the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end to the thirsty, I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. 
The one who conquers will have this heritage and I will be his God and he will be my son. Don't you long for that day? Anybody? Anybody out there long for this day? Come Lord Jesus. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. That's what we long for. It's written on my dad's gravestone. Come Lord Jesus. Because that's our hope. That's it. That's everything. This life hurts. This life hurts. Is filled with sickness and sorrow and pain and suffering. I'm not saying it's all bad. Some of it's really great. But a lot of times life just hurts. And there's death everywhere. And there's pain and sickness and sorrow. But even though this life is filled with hurt, even though this life is filled with suffering and Difficulty, we have hope in Jesus, don't we? Jesus conquered Satan's sin and death. And so he has paved the way for everybody who trusts and believes in him, believes in him to also one day conquer sin and death and to be free from the, the pains and the temptations and the difficulties of this life and to experience that abundant life fully we get a glimpse of it in this lifetime but it will be fully revealed in what the Bible calls uh, the kingdom of God best day ever hashtag best day ever (laughs) you want to be a part of that I'm just I'm just telling you if you haven't given your life to Jesus don't wait Tomorrow is not promised for anybody. Repent. Believe. What have you got to lose if you believe in Jesus and He's not real? Have you lost anything? No, except for loving and serving and caring and spending your life having compassion and mercy on other people and giving towards causes that help other That's the only thing that, that the byproduct, but it's good byproduct. But if you don't trust in Jesus, and Jesus is real, well, then you've really lost everything. And you don't want to be a part of the second judgment and the lake of fire and death and destruction and being separated from God for all eternity. We want to come back to God as it was in the beginning, so it will be in the end. God dwelling among His people. No sin, no sorrow, no sickness, no tears, no suffering. So we're going to sing our last song. I hope that gives you a little bit of encouragement today. I know everybody's going through something different. Everybody's going through something. We all got our hurt and pain and sickness and suffering that we're working with, death and sorrow. But until that day comes, until Jesus comes back, uh, He hasn't called us to just sit on our hands and twiddle our thumbs and say, Come Lord Jesus, when you got to come? I'll just watch Netflix and the sports until you're back. No. Jesus calls us to be ministering to other people, to be praying for healing for other people and uh, healing in the name of Jesus for those who are sick, laying hands on other people, the Bible talks about, letting them know that they are not suffering alone, that you are with them, that Jesus is with them. And even uh, the scriptures talk about anointing them with oil and having the elders pray for healing. It's in your notes. You can read that later. Symbolizing uh, the oil is symbolizing God's Holy Spirit poured out of them. So we're going to stand and sing. If you stand with me and sing our last song. But if you're suffering, if you'd like prayer, we're going to have the elders up front. And if you'd like to come forward during the last song or stay after, we will pray over you. I have some oil to anoint you with if you would like that to sort of uh, symbolize God's Holy Spirit in our lives. And just know that you are not suffering alone. We are with you. We care, and we love you, and so does Jesus. Amen.
sing these songs as I often do. But every song must end, and you never do. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Father, we thank you and praise you for all that you are, all that you've done, all that you promise you will do. I pray that you would empower us to go from this place with your, uh, filled with your power and your spirit to be who you called us to be, do what you called us to do, to be uh, your people in this world, to uh, have mercy and compassion and love others and pray for them and surround other people with support and encouragement that we so desperately need as humans in a sin-sick world. We love you, God, and thank you most of all for who, as our Savior, He frees us from Satan, sin, and death. And that is the best news in the history of the universe. In His name, everybody said, Amen. Amen.